Hey, this is Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. I want to do a, a video today to demonstrate how I colored on my mom's Mother's Day card. I used the Magnolia 3D embossing folder, which is a retiring product, and I used Shimmer White. I picked four colors, and today for the demo, instead of seaside spray I'm gonna use Sahara sand as the shadow because I picked the coordinating DSP after I had colored this and the DSP I picked didn't have any of the seaside spray and so I'm going to try to make it just a tiny bit better than the other one after I color on the shimmer white this is how the embossing comes out I will then attempt, with no guarantees, to color on Whisper White. What I find when you use a water-based product on the Whisper White that is heavy on the water side is it, it tends to swell. So we're going to see if I can get it done. Even on the Shimmer White, I didn't go heavy on the watercolor. I just wanted very soft hints of color. And it worked great. I used an Aqua Painter. I used a silicone mat will work. This is a Teflon mat, but the silicone mat from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to apply some water. I will start with the petal pink. I apply the petal pink by taking my spot and rubbing. If you have the full size stamp cases, you can squish them. And that will then open the lid, and on the lid will be some of the ink. You want to go very, very water. I made a mistake on this first one that I had done and had to cut off the smaller flower because I started out way too dark. You could even test to see how light on a piece of paper your coloring is. And I am looking for just some faint lines. Very quick. I find that the Shimmer White, you can put a couple of coats on, but I wouldn't go heavy because it isn't a watercolor paper. And the watercolor paper is so thick it's hard to get a good embossing image. And I like to rotate as I go. I'm doing darker colors in the corners, I guess I would call it where the deepest shadows would be. That, like that's a really good shadow line there. And you can start to see how it's shaping up. All right, and that's all I want to do with the petal pink. On the small flower, I'm moving with the same color to the bigger flower. In my world, less is more. I know that... Um, other people color and they like more color. Uh, my mom, for instance, she got her card and then of course she immediately had to replicate what I had done and she likes her colors a lot more colored than I do. So her flowers ended up being all pink or whatever color she used. I don't, I don't know if she used the same as I did. 
or if she used something different. I think it was a different, more peachy than the petal pink. So I'm rotating so that I can see the shadows better. And for now, I'm going to call that good. And then I'm going to switch. I want to do the flower part first, so I'm going to throw down a little, a little uh, Daffodil Delight. And when you clean your brush, just test to make sure it's clean so you don't get a muddy tone. Now I had colored the Daffodil Delight pretty solid and I'm going to try not to do that this time. I think I want more just subtle lines. I will go ahead and attach this to my Mother's Day card and then I'll also make this into a card and do a new post. So it will be in both places. Alright, so there's the Daffodil Delight. Okay. If you want, you could clean off your silicone mat or the Teflon sheet. You know, you could even use, if you don't have these, you could um, use a ceramic plate. A small one will work. If you have art palettes, you could use an art palette. This, I'm going to do green, so that's the brown. And then, then you want to be careful as you get more colors on your mat. Since I don't have separations, you could either like set your ink by it. But I can see what color I'm doing. Uh, so I want to make sure my green is nice and light. That is a little too light. Oh, and this is Pool Party. So my other color, I did Soft Sea Foam. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the Pool Party. It's a nice, a brighter green, which is fine. might be enough. The green. And then we've got the last color, Sahara Sand. Trying to see, there we go, where this comes in. And then I'll show you how I did the dots. I used pretty much the lightest ink colors for each of the values just to make sure that I stayed very light. I 
actually see that I missed a green leaf up here, so I'll go back with the green in a minute. Switching to green. Cleaning and a little more brown. I always like to color with a full image and then trim down. I, I look for whatever area of the coloring is the best and will fit best on my project after I pick my paper out. So I wouldn't trim your, your focal image down until after you've done your coloring. All right, so that is the colored image. And then I'm going to do some splats. I just get it really wet. And if you want to, you could cover your flowers if you didn't want the flowers to be wet. I think I did the corners, the top and bottom corners. I need a little more of the brown. Gonna be careful so that's the first one and I had said that I would try with whisper white because I'm wanting to always do projects with the most common materials if I possibly can and everybody has whisper white right so let's just see how the whisper white goes starting with the pink I would say that you need to be very careful with the amount of water. Already you can see that, that the uh, ink, the Whisper White really grabs the ink. So you don't get a lot of time to move the water around. What It's like whatever you put down is what you get. So I'm just gonna keep going. See, that's a little dark. The Whisper White was more for, or the Whisper White, the Shimmer White was more forgiving. I'm already, if I touch it again right there, I think it would start to ball up. pink. So I'm already not liking the way this paper soaks up the color and doesn't let you move it around. That's the benefit of like a true watercolor paper. So if you're going to use this paper, just be very careful. You might have to do a couple of practices to get your strokes the way you know you will want them.
All right, so not wanting to risk overdoing it and getting some ruined paper, I'm going to move on. Okay, so the next color we'll do the Daffodil Delight. I don't know if you can see this, but I can watch the water immediately soak in each stroke. So that means your color is locked in the minute you put it down. Okay. Can we go to green? Yeah, so you definitely do not get the watercolor effect of the washed look. I kind of almost ruined that right there. That did not come out good. This one came out good, and I liked that one. So now let's move on to brown. This is an experiment. I might not make the cut for turning into a project. But I did want to play with it. and just see how the paper handled it. It did about what I thought it would. You know, artists actually say, your media you put your art on makes or breaks it. And I never really believed that until I got some like good quality watercolor paper versus the the stuff that I would get when I was in college, just the the student level stuff. And what a difference a good paper makes. That it's not even that Whisper White isn't a good paper, it's just that it is not intended for this purpose. It's actually a lovely inking paper because of the smooth finish. I don't know if you've ever tried to stamp on an on the wrong kind of white cardstock, but it does not look good if it's not meant to have stamped ink. All right, so that's about what we're going to get. And then I'm going to do some some speckles and then we'll put them next to each other and see what they look like. not wet enough. There we go. Other ways you can speckle, there are speckle stamps. The Painted Poppies comes to mind, it has a large and a small splatter stamp, but it definitely has a different look than this look, which is just a random splatter look. All right, so I'm done. And now we will 
put the two next to each other and then I'm gonna bring them up close. And you can be the judge of which you prefer. And I hope you find this experiment helpful and get some use out of this Magnolia 3D um, embossing folder. Now I bought it knowing that I wanted to do some light subtle coloring. I had seen a couple of examples before I purchased it and it worked exactly the way I thought it would. And I like that it is a little bit different type of stamp where it's a focal in itself. Most embossing folders are just a background uh, accent to make your background paper have a more pop. So I liked the fact that this was an embossing folder that would be the main focal of the project. So I will now go away and make this into a project and get this posted. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm back. I just want to point out that when I did the speckling, I'm actually seeing some raised, this is where the water swelled the paper, the paper pulp swelled inside. So this could be a good effect. You might like it or you might not. So this is the whisper white and you see the bumps all over it. That's where I just splattered and let the water sit versus when I was taking a brush and I was just brushing lightly. I didn't let the water sit on the surface long enough to swell. So that's the splattering on Whisper White. And then let's set up the, the Shimmer White. Here is the Shimmer White. You can see that the splatter, which is the water, solid water droplets that sit on the surface, have not made the pulp part of the paper swell because the finish on the whisper or the shimmer white is such that it doesn't penetrate into the pulp. So that is just another point that I saw after I had finished the video. So we have done a very thorough analysis and again I thank you for watching. Hey, before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them. And remember to subscribe to my channel to see more card making video tutorials.